So um, <laughs> the eleven that I played with, I'm kind of picking it from the. Uh, I, I'm going to pick it from the team that I played with at Southampton because you know I, I didn't play very much for England, okay. um, yep. uh, and I you know I could name a, a players that I, I did play alongside there. But I think it's fair if I play, if I choose the ones from from Southampton, if you're oh. honest. So. Yep. Uh, so here goes. <laughs> There's a lot of and good goalkeepers. You might have to give them the stamp or not as well. Yeah. So well, that's a bit of pressure, I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I played under a lot of really good goalkeepers at Sound. I think Tim Flowers, I think, would probably be the, the pick of the bunch. Okay. Yeah, he was a good shot stopper. Yeah. Um, yeah he come was up very, big. very good shot stopper and, and a great lad to have in the change room as well. Um, you know, that, that kind of helps I think as well in a team situation to be a, a good team member who keeps everyone joking along you know yeah. makes everyone uh, not necessarily feel good about themselves because he was very good at taking the piss out of people <laughs> yeah. um, but in a way that, that wasn't offensive yeah. you know yeah. it was just great well, great goal, fun goalkeepers they've got a reputation of being a bit uh over the top and, uh, and crazy, haven't they? Yeah, they have so um, yeah. you got to be crazy. Yeah, between the I mean, Tim had a little bit of that about him. He wasn't one of the craziest ones I played with, you know. But we had people like John Burridge, who I played alongside, who was properly mental. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> then uh, about, I was quite lucky, really, you know, because we had Bruce Grobler played with uh, Dave Bess and Paul Jones, you know, international goalies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had we had quite a few, but I, I would say Tim had a really, really good spell at Southampton where I think he won player of the season a couple of times so yeah it's unusual stuff. for a goalie so then my back four uh, my right back I always get questioned by Saints fans when I choose this uh, <laughs> because I always choose uh, most people who are going to say I'm going to say Jason Dodd okay. um, because Dodd was obviously right back for a long time and kind of pretty much the same amount of time as my career um, but we had a guy uh, called Jeff Kenner who yeah, yeah, um, I know. Uh, who I thought was you know, a little bit better than Dodsey uh, as a fullback. I think he gave us a little bit more going forward than what Dodsey did. Um, and obviously he was the one that got the big move to Blackburn and went yeah. on to win the Premier League. Um, and so Jeff Kenner gets in as my right back. Um, left back again is a surprise to a lot of people um, because he only played for Southampton for one season. Uh, and he was probably coming towards the back end of his career at the time. Uh, and he had a lot of injuries, but I played with a guy called Derek Statham, okay. who was probably the second best left back in England for many, many years. And the only reason he didn't get uh, a whole host of England caps was because Kenny Sanson was uh, around at that time and was a, an incredible left back. But Derek Statham for me was uh, a very accomplished left back, really comfortable on the ball. I thought he was a bit ahead of his time in the way he played. He was, you know, one of the fullbacks that was. Uh, very, very comfortable with the ball, rarely gave the ball away and was quite happy to go and join in attacks. And um, So, yeah, Derek Statham gets in. Played with Derek in the 87-88 season. Yeah. Okay. These wing-backs, or uh, left-back, right-back, what, what were they like for pace compared to, say, modern day uh, oh, wing-backs? Yeah, not, yeah, nothing like today. I mean, you look at people like Carl Walker now and you just go, Jesus, how would yeah. you get past that? Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they, were, they were obviously we weren't as athletic back in uh, back in the eighties and nineties as the boys are today. There's definitely definitely been a change in that respect. I think. Well, they focused a lot more on defending, didn't they? They were, then? yeah, and, they, was, and intimidating seems... the wingers. They yeah. were the fullbacks yeah. in those yeah. days. A lot of them were were just intent on you know, yeah, taking up the winger, having a, having a free go <laughs> at the winger early because you could do that and not yeah. get a yellow card straight away yeah. back in those days. So centre backs uh, again. I played with a lot of decent centre backs at, at Southampton. Um, and I think I, I would choose. Yeah, I mean, there's I probably got six or seven I could choose from, wow. uh, and there's not you know a, a whole lot between all of them. But I think for the short spell that I played with Dean Richards at Southampton, he was yeah. unbelievably good. God bless his soul. Yeah, um, because he was taken from us far too early. But he had a wonderful spell at Saints. Got a big move to Spurs on the back of it. Um, so he was he was excellent. Uh, and then we had a whole host of centre backs right the way back from Mark Wright, who was in the team when I when I first started. Ken Moncow had a great spell at Saints yeah. for, for quite a number of years. Um, and the, the the second one I'm going to pick actually is right at the back end of my career um, was uh, a guy a Swedish centre back called Michael Svensson. Okay. Oh. Who got who had the nickname Killer. 
um, <laughs> uh, and he very much lived up to that nickname, even in training. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, he was one of those players who didn't differentiate between a match day and a training, training day. Okay. <laughs> he didn't care if you were your teammate. If it was a practice match on the on the training ground, he he would play just the same as he would. So, um, and he was a he was a fearsome. He made a good partnership with Klaus Lundekvam for for quite a number of years there. Um, Klaus was also another one that, that would be unlucky not to get in. Richard Hall was another one who was a really good centre back. Uh, injury cut short his career a little bit, but he was incredibly promising. So yeah, there was there was quite. I played with Russell Osman, another England international, who was probably the best two footed player I ever played with. Mm-hmm. Um, which you know, as a centre back, it was quite you, surprising. Yeah. yeah, but he was very cultured, but also a very good defender as well. So yeah, I had plenty to choose from centre back wise. Uh, in the midfield, um, I'm going to play four four two. Okay. I'm going old school. I called yeah. that. I called that earlier. Old school. <laughs> I said old school said four, four four two. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. In the centre of midfield, I, I I have to put in Jimmy Case um, because Jimmy at Southampton had a big influence um, on me in my my early years. He was coming to the end of his career, um, but he was he was a proper old school old pro. He mm-hmm. would look after the young kids. You know, I'd be playing out on the right wing. It, you know, if the left back was trying to kick the crap out of me, Jimmy would, <laughs> Jimmy would just wander over and let him have one <laughs> on my behalf, uh, and just go, you know, put put him in his place a little bit. Um, but he could also play. You know, he he was quite happy to put his foot in, but he was also a really good footballer. I think probably a little bit underrated uh, mm-hmm. as an actual yeah. footballer because of his hard man uh, image. So Jimmy would would get in as one of my centre midfielders. Um, the second one will. will if you're not a Southampton supporter, you'd probably go who, because <laughs> uh, he only played about just over 20 games for Saints, I think, in the okay, one okay. season he was with us uh, in the mid 90s, and that was a guy called Ronnie Eklund, um, Danish midfielder, and we only had him on loan. He was he, we got him on loan from Barcelona because Alan Ball, who was manager at the time, was mates with Johan Cruyff, who was manager at Barcelona. Uh, we just happened to be in the same pre-season camp over in Holland stayed at the same hotel as Barcelona and Borley and Cruyff were, you know, Cruyff were chatting one evening and um, and Borley just happened to say you know have you got what, have you got anyone spare <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you lend us anyone and uh, Johan Cruyff just had a think about it and he went he said uh, I'll leave you a present in the morning nice. and because uh, Barcelona were leaving the next day and they left behind Ronnie Eklund uh, and he came and trained with us, and right from the first training session, I was like, "Whoa, this boy can play!" Uh, you know, and we were right on each other's wavelength right from the start. It was the the most fun I had on a football pitch was when uh, when I played alongside Ronnie. So that was pretty good. Was he quite an attacking player? Then? Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, was an attacking midfielder. Um, just really, really comfortable on the ball. Uh, saw pitches early, um, saw passes early. He was a good finisher. Um, and yeah, he just had a back injury which cut, cut short his his career at Southampton really, and that was that was a bit of a shame because that was that ninety four ninety five season was the was the most fun I had. I ended up scoring thirty goals. There. So they would be my my two in uh, in midfield. Um, out on the left wing, I'd have to put Rodney Wallace. Um, Rodney was uh, again up there with Ronnie in terms of player that I enjoyed playing alongside. His pace was electric. He was a really good finisher, um, and he got he got me out of a lot of uh, a lot of trouble because I knew um, if I just put the ball in an area, I knew that with his pace he was gonna he was gonna get there before any defender. So even when I was in trouble, I didn't even need to look. I would just pop the ball in this in the area, and he would just sprint onto it, and everyone would go, "Oh, what a great pass that was!" <laughs> 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 well, not really. I just put it in there so he can just. <laughs> He can just run, so he used to make me look better than I probably actually was. Um, so Rodney was definitely getting the team. Um, right side of me, I'm not going to pick myself. Obviously, uh, <laughs> we weren't sure about that. Either. I would have picked you. Plastic <laughs> <laughs> yourself, in. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think as a as a right sided midfielder or a right winger, um, Rodney's brother was was pretty good as well, Danny who obviously got the move to Man United. Mm. Uh, so played alongside Dan for, for two or three years uh, before he got his move. In fact, it was a, it was actually Danny's move that paved the way for me to get a regular place in the team. Right. So as a kid, I was you know, in and out of the team, on the bench a lot, 
And it was only when, really, when Danny moved to Man United that all of a sudden it was like, okay, that, that's my spot now. And the manager kind of trusted me. And um, and so, yeah, I, I got a lot to thank Danny for as well. So, uh, but again, he was, uh, he was pace electric. Um, fans loved him at the Dell. Um, and he, he could do things that other players couldn't. Um, so, yeah, Danny would be there on the right. And then I've got to pick two up front. Now, and the manager as well. Oh, and the manager. Well, yeah, yeah. the manager's easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> obviously, the, the Premier League's all-time top goal scorer okay. um, would have to get in my team. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Alan Shearer would have to be in there. I mean, he, he probably got better after he left Saints, to be honest. He wasn't prolific for us, right. but you could tell you know, he was, he was going to be a player. Uh, and he was getting better and stronger every season. Um, and when he left to go to Blackburn, it was just the making of him. Um, so, uh, so yeah, Alan would be one of my. That would have been devastating if he stayed at Southampton. You two, I think. Yeah. 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 I mean, we had a, that that season when me, him, and Rodney were all playing uh, up front, and we had a couple of seasons, but um, the eighty nine ninety season especially was was one of the funnest seasons that I had. I think the the football that we were playing, you know, a, a lot of weeks we were playing four two four. Right. You know, Paul Rideout was up front as well with with Alan, and I remember Liverpool coming to the Dell in October '89, and they hadn't been beaten all season, and they came to our place and we smashed them four one, and it could have been seven or eight one easy, and nobody could have complained. You know, we were in the woodwork, all sorts. Um, so that was a that was a fun team to play. Um, uh, so yeah, I think the the second player up front with Alan. <laughs> I think I, I have to go for uh, one of the guys back end of my career again, um, but he was a little genius on a football pitch. Um, again, injuries probably meant we didn't see the best of him over a long period of time, but Marion Pajals, All right. mm -hmm. a little Latvian Michael Owen. Yeah. Um, he was an unbelievable talent. Uh, he was one of the very few players that uh, would do things in training that would have me going, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and so yeah, I was really impressed with with what he could do. Um, so and he he had big hand in keeping us up in the I think it was the ninety eight ninety nine season um, when he came in and he could barely speak a word of English and he came in and scored a few goals at the end of the season and helped keep us up and the fans absolutely adored him and uh, rightly so he was he was when he was fit he was really really good for us yeah so. And the manager um, is pretty easy. I played on the nine, but there was only one really that stood head and shoulders above the others, and that was the late great Alan Ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never he really a... built a team around you uh, yeah. during this spell. There, he did. He did. He got the best out of me in a way, kind of probably none of the other managers really did. You know, he had a belief in me that that perhaps none of the other managers really did. I always felt like most of the managers would always kind of focus on the stuff that I couldn't do. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. um Whereas Bordy would just focus on the stuff that I was good at and let me go out and do it. Uh, and that 18 months he was my manager was the best 18 months of my career. So I got 45 goals in 64 games in that period when Alan Ball was my manager. So, yeah, yeah. You know, you know the, the stats tell it all, really. So, yeah, that's, that's my Saints lot. Good yeah. save. Out of those, um, is there any that you'd give the world class stamp to? 